Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger and it's time for another champion build video. Today I'm playing as Alistar in the bottom lane as kind of the tanky support. Um, there's a few ways you can play this champion. You can play him all out support, you can play him all out tank, you can do even kind of an AP build and do some decent damage with him. But uh, I kind of do the in-between of the supporty tank build. Um, I like the supports that can be tanky to be a little bit more tanky than supporty just because... Um, I think it's very helpful late game when you are able to tank team fights quite well. Um, we're going to get into a handful of little fights down here. Unfortunately, we gave up first blood because of uh, it being unfortunate. Um, Rengar's going to come down here and pick up a kill. He is then going to unfortunately die to the Graves. And I'm going to move in this bush, see if Graves is going to stick around. If he is, the things I can do is what I just did there, which we'll talk about and go over. What that was right there was, was using my W and my Q ability kind of all in one fell swoop. Um, if you use your headbutt, which is your W ability, it rams your enemy and knocks them back. But if you hit pulverize, which is your Q ability, at the same time as you hit them, they will immediately get knocked up. So instead of just hitting them with headbutt to knock them away, you can help knock them away, quote unquote, and do that damage, and then knock them straight up right away. So um, it's a good way of getting over to them and knocking them up right away. So going over these abilities that we're going to talk about, his Q ability, which was the pulverize, that's going to knock up the enemy champions, deal some damage to them for, uh, it's going to knock them up for one second, and then it's going to stun them for 0.5 seconds upon them landing. So uh, just something to take note. This is the first ability I take in the game, and it's also the first one that I do max out completely. Because it does pretty good damage, it's good to get it on the shortest cooldown that it can be on. Uh, Alistair has a handful of long cooldowns that need addressing... And uh, we're going to address these a few ways with uh, just some cooldown reduction items and a few other things. And then uh, then we have our W, which is our headbutt. What that's going to do, like I said, is it's going to ram them back. If you do team that up with your Q, you can then do the combination where you headbutt basically to them and then pulverize them up into the air right away. It's a good way to get the damage off and to close the gap. And um, that is going to be the last thing we're going to max out completely. We just want to take one point in that at level 2, and then we'll max that last and then as for your E ability, that's your Triumphant Roar, which is going to heal you and sur surrounding allies a little bit. So um, I'm going to put points in that early if I need the heal, but I'll put one point in that at level 3 just to get a little bit of a heal going on. And this kind of depending on uh, what you need to do with that, you can put points in that if you do or don't need to. And then our ultimate, which is our Unbreakable Will, which removes all the buffs. You're going to gain physical damage, and you're going to take reduced damage from physical and... Uh, and AP damage for the next 7 seconds. So, all of these things are kind of his kit. Your passive is just basically every time you pa cast a uh, an ability, you're going to deal some weird damage, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of interesting if you want to look into that a little bit more closely. I'm not going to go over that. I'm going to try to get into a little bit of a fight here. I did knock back the Lux, but unfortunately did not pulverize that in the right time. Um, sometimes you won't want to always use pulverize afterwards. Sometimes you will just want to use your knockback. Here you're going to be able to tower dive quite easily. Unfortunately, Graves is going to get away with just a sliver of health. Um, that was just really unfortunate to say the least. So uh, we should have kept attacking there. But you can see there when I did use my ultimate how much tower damage I can take. Because you are you can really tank towers quite easily with your ultimate. You become super buff Ally. He's just really hard to kill for those 7 seconds. He's just going to take a lot less damage. So and that is going to be happening. We're going to retreat a little bit. Now going over some of those first beginning items early on in the game. At level 1, I pick up the two things that are going to build into my Philosopher's Stone at level 1. I'm also going to take one ward and one health pot because I'll have enough gold to get all of those items. Um, then in lane, at least I'll have some health regen, some mana regen. And then the first time I go back, I can then pick up that Philosopher's Stone, which is going to give me that gold over time, which is going to be very important. And uh, then the first item after that I try to pick up too um, is some boots, and I try to pick up wards as well. I need to pick up some more as well this time I go back because I just used the last one I had to put in a bush. And uh, yes, so we have all of this going on. I also did pick up a little bit of armor, which we'll be building into a future item that I am going to be working on. And then now I was back at base, I did pick up a sight stone, so I have placeable wards that are going to be refreshed when I go back to base. And it's going to give me 100 health. Unfortunately, I did pulverize the ground there and was unable to pulverize her up. Our Darius is doing a good job against this poppy top. She's getting out leveled right now, so um, our bot lane's going okay. We're farming well down there, but unfortunately they've gotten a couple kills. I'm going to pick up an easy assist right there, just kind of helping out Darius, who really didn't need the help. But you know what? Splitting off some of the gold to get um, a, an assist is never a bad thing, and it's going to be very helpful for me later on. And I'm uh, going to ward Dragon there because I have that Sight Stone. Still picking up gold per five from our Philosopher's Stone. 
And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep working on this for now. We're going to keep farming a little bit when our AD carry is out of lane when we can. Other than that, I'm pretty much letting him obviously farm because um, I don't need to. But luckily, I think most of the people I'm in this game with are friends. So uh, there's some give and take with that in this situation. So we have all of that happening for the most part. Um, we're getting over here. We're just going to keep getting the little shuffles. Unfortunately, it's Lux Graves, which is a pretty good combination bot, uh, especially with just kind of her CC that she has. They have some pretty good stuff that can kind of slow me down from using all of my crowd control to get to them. Here, I'm going to start fighting her because I know I actually can do decent damage to her. I do have Graves attacking me. Um, Dari, we got Draven moving in now, and uh, he's going to be able to pick up the kill on the... Graves, I was able to exhaust him. When I am playing Alistair and I am playing him in this role, I typically go with Flash and Exhaust. Gonna pick up an assist there too on the Lux. We're gonna get chased here and unfortunately um, he's gonna give himself up and I'm just gonna run off. We could have maybe gotten to a little bit of a fight there, but I didn't really have too much mana at the beginning of that. I only would have been able to use about one or two things to get off and we probably would have both died, but um, nothing too horrible to say the least. Uh, they closed in. We did get a couple kills before they got one. Um, back at base now, we are able to buy a few more items. I'm going to finish off my boots. Now, I go with Merc Treads. If you want boots of mobility for getting around the map quicker, it's not a bad idea at all. But I do run some runes that are going to help me with this a little bit. Um, but I like Merc Treads just because the magic resist is going to be nice and the tenacity is not going to be too bad whenever my ult isn't up and able to uh, rid the disables. Um, but other than that, we're going to get in a little bit of a fight here. We're kind of moving in and kind of trying to capture these ones off. I'm going to try to get in between them by flashing and pulverizing to get Graves up, knock him back into this wall. Luckily, I was trying to let her finish off that kill. Graves fail flashes and he fail slides, so she is going to pick the kill up. Um, although Rengar was on the other side, he would have been able to clean that up. So, um, but that was interesting. This game, as you can see when I'm playing as the tanky support, I'm going to get in there and deal damage I can and use CC to put them into positions where my team can pick up the kills. I'm not going to really pick up any kills this game on purpose because... I don't need them too much. I'm going to get tanky, and that's all I'm going to be used for. I think there might be my only death of the game. So um, I got in a little fight with Skarner, thinking I could do some damage to him. But unfortunately, I was unable to. I forget that Skarner is very tanky and does deal plenty of damage. So we all have that going on. Um, as you can see, we're kind of building towards one of our first main item, which is an Aegis of the Legion. It's going to help me get tanky, and it's going to help my teammates get kind of tanky as well by giving them some armor and some magic resist and some health. Um, and then we're going to be building that further on uh, in the future into that bulwark. So we're going to be doing all of that to help our team out. It's going to help me as well. This is actually a new way to get a good amount of magic resist coming up in the game. I know with the removal of Force in Nature, that's an item I would have been getting in the future. But, uh, you know, now that we can't get that, luckily the bulwark actually gives you a lot of magic resist. So that's going to be one way to pick up a handful of magic resist while you are playing. Um, some of these tankier champions. Here, I'm just trying to get in front of her and always trying to be in front of her so I can always knock her back. As you could see, right before she went into her egg form, I ran out of that bush, kind of trying to predict if she was going to keep running. That way, I'd always be in front of her and always could hit her back to the team. So, um, just trying to stay in front of people. If you do pulverize somebody before you use your headbutt, then you can kind of walk around to the other side of them and knock them away so they're even further away from their tower so they're not as safe. These are a few things you can do with Alice. You'll learn all this too as you play him and what some of the right combinations are for some of this. Um, another thing you can do is keep taking the tower just so the aggro doesn't switch to your teammates, which is what I was doing there a little bit. Um, but I can get out of that now because we did kill that Lux and I did pick up an assist on her. Um, I think we're going to get away here. Uh, I think I'm going to heal uh, Rengar as he gets away and just barely make him live basically through that nonsense of all of their damage. But you know what? We can go back to base in a second. Unfortunately, I don't really have any mana here, but if you just run out the enemy as a tank, sometimes you can scare them away from your tower. So uh, <laughs> that's what you can do because you're scary. Alistair is a really good tank, and he does a good job of helping teams out and with crowd control and just being just kind of annoying because you can get to one target pretty quick and you can just kind of make it really for them to uh, to get away because you can just kind of crowd control someone out of control to say the least. You can get to 80 carries pretty quick if you headbutt over to them and pulverize the ground and uh, exhaust them and your team can pretty much close gaps. Here we're getting a little of a fight. She's going to put her wall up and knock us or uh, block us off from getting between. I'm going to actually flash through and then or knock her back into the team so she's not going to get away. So um, you can use your flash too to get on the other side of them and then knock them back to their teams. In theory, she would have been pretty safe there if the, I wouldn't have been on our team because that wall would have been a basically free escape for her. But luckily I did have flash up and I was able to get over to her and she was stunned so I was able to then headbutt her back to the team. So 
Um, just something that I did there that uh, you can kind of think about how you can use his abilities to help you while jumping around. Now, a few ways that you can try to kind of ca counter Alistair. There's a few different ways, mostly just armor penetration and all that fun stuff is going to basically be the only ways you can get through him. Um, Blade of the Ruined King, if he's building a lot of health, is going to be a good way to kind of counter him because uh, that's weird. She did her little whatchamacallit move. I can't think of the name of it, but then I headbutted her, but unfortunately kind of went through it. So, going to get in a little fight here, though. Um, I'm going to try to keep staying in front of him, as you can see, so I can keep my pulverize going. Unfortunately, Scar's going to move away, so I'll just pulverize her if I can. Um, but we're going to actually just be able to pick up that kill nice and easy. Our Darius is still doing fine, which is good, and our Draven is doing all right as well now. So, um, we're doing pretty good, to be honest, and uh, we're building all right. Uh, don't have too many items yet, really main items, but as you can see, just by having that Sight Stone and that Aegis, I have a lot of health already because of his just natural amount of health he gets and because of those items. There I'm actually going to finish off that Sight Stone into the Ruby Sight Stone, which is going to give me 300 health now, and I'll be able to place three wards on the map at once, and then I'll have, I believe, two still left that I can place and it'll just replace one of the other ones before I go back to base and those are replenished when I revisit base. So I'm going to try to keep this map warded up a little bit and uh, try to help us out here. Try to get in a little bit of a fight down here. Unfortunately, they use all they use some flashes and some of their escape ability to get away. And uh, yeah, also that last time I was back at base, I am picking up some armor because I do have a lot of magic resist because of that Aegis and later, like I said, it is going to give you a handful of magic resist. And because of my runes and that setup, I do have plenty of magic resist. So I decided to pick up some armor, and that is going to be building towards a glacial shroud, which we'll get to decide what we want to do with later in the game. But a glacial shroud is going to help you with cooldowns, give you some extra mana, because you can go through your mana fairly quick with Alistair. His abilities are not cheap, to say the least. Getting, a little, getting into a little bit of a fight, picked up an assist, um, because that's what we're doing. We're picking up assists. We've got 13 of them so far. So, um, yeah, just trying to support the team as I can and just be super tanky as the tank because that's your job and that's what you're good at. Continuing on with the build. Um, as for my Masteries page that I do go with, I go with the 129.0. It's just super tanky. Get all of the tank things that you can that are very helpful. If you want to see what this page looks like, you can head over to my Facebook page. And uh, there are pictures of all my Masteries pages on there, so don't forget to go over there and like that. And then also for my rune pages, um, what I like to do with my runes is either go with magic resist marks or magic penetration marks. You will deal some extra damage. Um, so you can kind of do that. I think I had magic resist this game. And then you can go with armor seals, magic resist per level glyphs, and then I take movement speed quintessences for some bonus early move speed since you don't start with boots. And uh, it's very helpful to have movement speed quintessences on tanks so you can get into positions a lot better and a lot quicker. So these are just some simple things that you can do. If you like different runes, that's fine. You can go with that. If you want some gold over time runes that you have, if you have other support champions that you use those for, probably not a bad idea to use some of those. Um, luckily, I still have my Philosopher's Stone, so I am still getting gold over time right now. So we're still getting gold that way. And we are getting lots of assists. I think we got... What, we still got more of them now? So... Um, there's some of this happening, so I am still getting a good amount of gold that way. If you wanted to build another gold per five item, like a Cage's Lucky Pick, and build that into another item that could help you later in the game, you could do that by either building one of those and building it into a Twin Ghost. You could do that. So, um, if you wanted to do that, that's a good idea. If you want more gold per five, or if you're just having a really hard time getting any assists or kills, I'm gonna come over here and help out Rengar. She's not gonna be going anywhere. I'm just gonna run away and let him finish that off. Um, so, nothing to worry about there. Like I said, not really trying to get any of the kills against the team. Going to let them deal the main damage. I'm just going to be really tanky. Now, like I said, there are some ways that you can play Alistair and you can get him to deal a handful of damage by building a Trinity Force or just building a, a little bit of AP. But I'm not worried about this. I am dealing some okay damage. I'm just not trying to get the kills right now. I'm just trying to be really tanky support. There are plenty of different ways to do this. And uh, not, none are really wrong and none of them are really the only way there's lots of ways to build these tanky supports so um you can always build them a little bit differently just kind of depending on what you're comfortable with and how you like to play them whatever suits your playstyle best this is just kind of the way i like to recommend this champion be played because it works really well you are just tanky and annoying so i uh, like like right now i'm trying to just be in the middle of the fight i'm trying to separate the team out and trying to keep them 
Um, try to pick them off one at a time. Try to headbutt people out that are in the ways of my carries or that are trying to get in there and deal the damage to certain people on my team I don't want them to. So I can protect my team that way by getting to those targets or I can get to the high priority targets on their team and knocking them into my team so we can get rid of them faster. All right, so back to the build. I know there's been a lot of talking in this build, but you know what? There's lots to talk about with these tanky supports. Back to the build now. We did finish off that Aegis of the Legion into that Bulwark, and that's going to give us a lot of magic resistant armor and regen and all of that. As you can see right now, we have 160-some armor and magic resist, which is pretty good. I do have that Glacial Shroud now as well, which is giving me armor cooldown reduction and some uh, mana, which later I will decide to either build into a Frozen Heart if I want the stats from that, which will slow down the attack speed from the enemies and give me a lot of armor. Um, or you can build it in that Iceborne Gauntlet, which is a good item. It's going to be a way you can get um, some more damage. Here I actually am going to pick up the kill on the Anivia because uh, she needed to die. It looked like she wanted to try to get away somehow, so I just decided to headbutt her. But if you wanted to pick up an Iceborne Gauntlet to get uh, just a little bit of extra damage with the Sheen built into it, that's a good I idea or a good way to do that with Alistair. So that's what you could do instead, instead of that Frozen Heart. So that's the next item you could be getting with that Glacial Shroud. Um, if you wanted to, then as well, this Philosopher's Stone is going to be turned into Australia's Revelry, um, which is what I like to do with her. And uh, all the other items are listed in the bottom of the build, guys. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, but the full guide is listed. Um, but other than that, I guess I'll just see all of you in the next build video.